On episode 374 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Lynn Lindbergh and discuss her book, Couch to Active. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 374. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Our guest today calls herself the bad couch guru. Like me, uh, she went through a corporate career and then became a personal trainer. Her site and her her uh, community and her podcast are called Couch to Active, and that's actually what she also called her book. Uh, she's a lot of fun. I know you're going to enjoy this conversation. Uh, with no further ado, here's Lynn Lindbergh. Lynn, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Uh, hello, Alan. Thanks. Good to be here. You know, your your book, and I always like interviewing podcasters uh, because I know, you know, one, you're going to make it very, very easy for me <laughs> from a sound and quality perspective. <laughs> so everything's going to be really good. But, or, but, or will I? <laughs> or will you? Yeah. <laughs> well, remember, we're doing mine first, and then I'm going to record on yours. So okay, I'll be good. <laughs> I'll be good. Gets both ways. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the cool thing is this: the, you know, your, your your book is called Couch to Active, and that's the, that's also the name of your podcast. And I really really like that. I, I mean, you know, I think mm-hmm. so many people today they get like get locked into this concept of, well, you know, I'm not going to look like that person. So maybe Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a tough thing for people because I think most of us looking like that person, and we all have that image in our head of, of either the bikini body or the sweaty ripped six pack abs. And uh, most of us will never get there. Even if we do train exactly by the book and do everything by the book. But that's that's the thing about Couch to Active is that's not the point. And we recognize that for most of us, that's not even what we want. So and I agree. And, you know, for me, I've always I've always tried to tell my clients because some of them do. They they want that that look. And I'm like, okay, if, if it's a look you're after, that's that's great. You can you can aspire to that. You can work towards that. Um, and and I'll I'll do what I can do to help you get there. But what I found is in the end, when I start really digging in with them, it comes down to what do you, what do you want to be able to do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it, that's where the active concept to me comes in is it's like, okay, active in your mind could be being able to run around with your grandchildren at the zoo, um, whereas active for someone else could be they want to go do a Spartan. It, well, exactly. And, and really, I found that at the core, it's people want, I want to live a life I love. I want to love my life. And so, you know, if I'm going to the gym for an hour a day doing a workout that I hate and dread every day, just so I can look a certain way, it's like, no, no, that's, that doesn't make me happy. That doesn't make me find any joy at all. And so that's where it falls apart for most people, because, you know, really it's that internal feeling that we want of joy and peace and happiness. Yeah. You know, and I, I think the other side of this is, I think, you know, like you'll see a training program, like a couch to, t- to a 5k or mm-hmm. just something like that that's put out mm-hmm. there and someone will get out there and start doing it and they, they get out there and then all of a sudden there's just, you know, something gets thrown in their way. Um, it could be a health issue, mm-hmm. an injury, or how, how do you coach? How do you talk to people about dealing with those health issues that just kind of pop up and, and get in our way of you know, because it's it's never going to be a straight line, but we want it to be a straight line. How how do we deal with that? I want it to be a straight line. If if you find it, if you find it, call me. I'll give you my number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the interesting thing is there are, as we know, a gajillion workout programs, pills, potion, lotions, gyms. I mean, you name it. It's all anything that you can give your wallet to. It's out there <laughs> for you. And in and of themselves, there's nothing for the most part, nothing inherently wrong with them. But most of them are designed for when life is going good. But the problem is, like you just said, what happens when the cart gets upset? What happens when you know you have 
chronic illness or surgery or, you know, God forbid we age, right? Um, (laughs) And I have found that a lot of times, one of the big things that we forget about is compassion and compassion for ourselves. And part of my journey was, I've got a couple of chronic health issues that I'm really public with. I'm I'm missing 30% of my lung function and I've got uh, fibromyalgia and another mysterious disease we're still trying to figure out. And it keeps me in the back of the pack all the time. And I had to pause and really look at it and say, okay, why am I beating myself up trying to get the faster 5K time when you know I can't? Why, why is this so important to me? And when I redefined success as doing what I can do today and honoring what my body can do today. And if today all I can do is a 30 minute walk and maybe 20 seconds of jogging and I do it, that's success. Or if today I've got a big flare up and all I can do is grocery shop and then take a four hour nap, then if I honor my body and what it can do, one day at a time, one hour at a time. That's my new success criteria. For, for me and for people that I, tons of people I've worked with, that just becomes so freeing and so liberating. And then you can begin to really have that incremental success and gain strength because you're not torturing yourself over the things you can't do that you used to be able to do. And instead, you're focused, or I'm focused more on that positive, what I can do. And so it's just a better, happier place to be. Yes. And I like how you started that out with with the word compassion. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm, I'm in the process of reading a book. It's it's set up each day. There's a a verse, and it's it's based on Stoicism. It's called the Daily Stoic. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and and so each day, each day there's like a little passage from Seneca or Marcus Aurelius or one one of the mm-hmm. original uh, Stoics, and then he kind of writes his little his little blurb, you know, his little bit about it uh, to get you thinking about things. And the, the kind of the first section of that is is clarity. And so you know, as, just as I've kind of gone through it, and and then I read in your book, it's I hadn't really given a lot of thought to how much negative self-talk I have. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, it's huge. You know, I, I called myself fat, and I, I, I guess I was fat, but I, I mm-hmm. just kept, I considered myself to be fat. Mm-hmm. And so I used that word. And mm-hmm. uh, every time, you know, I noticed myself slip up, the, the negative self-talk would kind of step right back in. What are some things that we can oh. do to kind of get that compassion back for ourselves? I just push the happy button and you'll feel happy, right? No. <laughs> Where is that button? <laughs> I know. I've been looking for it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I won't give up hope. I'll find it someday. <laughs> no, you're exactly right, Alan. That compassion piece is is huge because our generation, when I say that at you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, we were just drilled with that concept of no pain, no gain, grit, self-discipline, try harder, try harder, live like you'll die tomorrow. I mean, we've all heard these thousands of times and it just puts more and more pressure on us and we end up just feeling bad. And like you said, we feel just fat and out of shape and ugly. And and so one part of the piece is just calling out the fact that really start paying attention to what what that brain is thinking you know when if when you put on the put on the pants in the morning and you look in the mirror what is what is that brain saying to yourself and and the more for me a lot of it has been just talking to people about body image and realizing uh if we just talk about body image for for example it's an issue for i've discovered and learned cuz i hang out with a lot of bodybuilders and a lot of women that you would call tens and they we all have body image issues and we all are hard on ourselves and and so it's really just that awareness of okay i am i am beautiful i am handsome and and, and the work that needs to ha- the reason i'm dancing around this is the there <laughs> the work is just is just huge to do to do around it 
And one thing that helps me is to realize, now, wait a minute. If I think of, ask myself the question, who are the best friends in my life? Who are the people that I have the most respect for? Who are the people I most admire? None of them fit on the cover of a Cosmopolitan or Vogue magazine at all. And and when I bring that back to myself, it helps me remember, you know, this body external thing really isn't that important. And it helps me give myself compassion. So yeah, that's, I, the ex, that's the external piece of it. But yeah. I, I've, I've found that it, it really kind of comes from a, a practice called gratitude. You know, mm-hmm. you, you sit down and you think about the things that, um, that just make you happy. The, those, those moments of joy when you can sit back and say, this was, this was good, you know, and mm-hmm. what I've found is if, if you are eating the right foods, you can be grateful that your body's using that food to improve your health. If you're, uh, Mm -hmm. like you said, you you go out and you do that 30 minute walk with 20 seconds of jogging. When you're done with that, that's, that's something you should celebrate. You should should be happy that you had the capacity to, to do that and that you're doing something to improve yourself. And when you find yourself starting to go down that negative thought path, that's that's when you just want to turn it on and say, okay, I might have I might not have eaten very well today, but uh, I kissed my wife in the morning. I, I I called my daughter and told her I loved her. You know, all those different things that you do, mm-hmm. you can feel gratitude for. Um, and if you keep practicing gratitude and keep looking for joy, a lot of that self negative self talk kind of goes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really it it really really does. And, and then may you know possible possibly too, is to take inventory of who's in your social circle. I mean, they say you're the, you're the composite of the five closest people around you, right? And whether that's true or not, everyone's saying it. So it must be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so who, what are those folks around you saying, you know, and are they helping you with a positive mindset or yeah, and, are they... And, and, and yeah. It's not on Facebook. <laughs> no. <laughs> everybody's presenting their their best front side uh image in facebook and filters and all the other stuff and just realize that you don't you don't have to keep up with them uh, you just got to keep up with you yeah yeah don't don't compare your what do they say don't compare your inside life to everybody's outside life or yeah. public life yeah exactly yeah now, absolutely which is also why I'm not on Instagram. I might be the only personal trainer that's not on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely, I'm barely on Instagram because of the peer pressure. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I, I can't, I can't do it. Plus it's a phone thing. You know, you can't do it on a, on a browser. And I'm like, okay, I'm too old for. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, is that? Okay. <laughs> good thing. Good thing. 40 plus, 40 plus. We're, we're not too many of us are on Instagram. So we're good. Yeah, good, good. Okay. <laughs> now, as as we go through things, and I and I think this is uh, where where a lot of people kind of start to struggle. And and you you talked about it a little bit with your lung issue, is yeah. that we're going to hit these barriers. Yes, and they're natural yes. barriers because if, mm-hmm. if we were all meant to be, you know, six pack abs, bikini body people, then everybody would be. It was, it was easy. It's, but yeah. it's not easy. There's overabundance of food, and there's over uh, stimulation where it's just easy to sit on your couch and, and never leave. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, if the pizza guy would walk in the house and put it down in front of me at the coffee table, I would never leave the house, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got teenage boys. That's exactly yeah. the life they would love. <laughs> you love like, hey, come on in. <laughs> oh, right here, mom. Just put the pizza yeah. right here. I'm yeah, good. <laughs> right here. But uh, so there's all these things that are going to distract yeah. us. All these things are going to keep yes. us from getting where we really want to be. Mm-hmm. How do we, how do we break those barriers? Yeah, yeah. No, well, and when it comes to to breaking barriers in in fitness, one of the things that I like to share a lot is when you think about your biggest barrier, it's not a gym membership. It's not cash to throw at a personal trainer. It's not you know all kinds of things. It's the couch. The couch is our biggest competitor, and and so we, when we look at okay, what are what are our barriers to getting off the couch? And I and I say that metaphorically because I know some people are listening to this and you're saying, but I'm not on the couch. I'm just so busy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the things that we we do and teach is we call the break the breaking barriers list, and we have folks sit down and what this does. The reason this 
exercise, the breaking barriers list is important and impactful is because it helps you get crystal clear on what your real barriers are versus imagined barriers. And then it helps you get really laser focused on what you can do that requires the least amount of work to have the biggest impact on your ability and motivation to exercise. So this is what I do to get people there. And you you can even start this right now. You just get any old piece of paper or if you prefer to type you know, on your computer and you think of every single barrier to exercise that you can think of. And there's, you know, there's the big barriers. I broke my leg. I got really sick. I have, you know, an aging parent I'm caring for. I have a job that I can't quit. You know, <laughs> I could just quit my job, you know, or retire. I'm not there yet. And then there's all the little tiny, tiny barriers like I'm just, you know, busy or my kid called and needed this this afternoon when I was going to work out or, or this one's happened to me once. I showed up at the gym with two right tennis shoes. I forgot my left tennis shoe, you know, <laughs> and list them all, all out. Then go through that list and really ask yourself objectively of all of these barriers that I see, which ones can I actually impact? today or which ones can I impact in the future? And you take the ones you can impact today and just pick one and say, okay, of all these barriers, like take this stupid example of two right shoes, you know, okay, I can pack my gym bag earlier and leave it in the bag and in in the car and it'll be there for me. Pick one and just work on breaking that one barrier. And let all the rest go. And then maybe the next day or the next week, pick another one and let all the rest go and just work through that list. And then the next question that always comes up really naturally is what do you do with the barriers that are here to stay? So, myself, for example, missing 30% of my lung function, that's there to stay. It's probably only gonna get worse the rest of my life. Then you got to make peace with those. And that's the real hard work is when you really look at and spend some time saying, okay, what, can, and it goes back to that compassion piece. What can I do given this barrier? Because sometimes it's really easy to try to think life should be perfect. Life should be perfect. I'll, I'll never give up. I'll never give up. And, and it's not giving up. It's just facing reality head to head and getting yourself in a real positive mind space and a positive mental space around it. So that's the that's the whole breaking barriers list piece that we work through in a nutshell. Yeah. It really, to me, it comes down to self-awareness. Yes. And that is, if you can do this exercise, really, this is groundbreaking for getting you on track to really accomplish some great things. Because Mm -hmm. once you start understanding what those barriers are and you really kind of eliminate, because like you said with the, I learned the same thing. I had to pack my gym bag the night before or invariably I would, I'd forget my shoes or I'd forget Mm -hmm. my socks or, you know, or just forget the bag. Mm -hmm. Um, I literally packed the bag and set it by the door. So I I would almost have to trip over it in the morning. (laughs) <laughs> to get out the door. <laughs> you and a million people every day. Yes. Yeah. And I double check. I got my both, got both my shoes. I got, you know, and, yep. and so you have to put those little strategies in place to say, okay, these are the things I know that are going to trip me up. You know, I walk into the office on Friday and I, I, I see the sharks chumming at the break room. I know they brought donuts. I'm, I'm staying away from the break room. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> just those That's a hard ones. one. It is. It is. <laughs> That's an advanced skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it one is it was it was funny because I I yeah I just they were they were really this, these were particularly weird they were called uh, spud nuts they were made from uh, potato flour oh. so probably even worse than regular um for, from a sugar hot yep. just, yeah probably blood sugar through the roof and and I, and I, I loved them too I was the same way and then I was like okay I got to get away from that so I would I'd have nuts in my office and I'd, I'd see them you know just like I said it'd be just like sharks chumming. And it, so I'd be like, okay, can't go there. I'd go to my office and just in my nuts and sit at my desk and yeah. not go into the break room until lunchtime because I would usually be gone by then. That's great. That's but, great. 
but that was, like I said, that was a, that was a practice of self-awareness and understanding what are the barriers that are going to keep me from getting what I needed. And that was one that would come up every once in a while. And yeah. One well, I couldn't a- really defend because I, I can't, you know, I could, can't keep them from bringing donuts in, but I have to know myself to, to deal yeah. with. Oh no, no, I, I absolutely. I, I'm, <laughs> it's funny. I have this, this moment of shame that's coming back, which I must let go. But yeah, my, I, when I worked in a corporate office for 20 years, sometimes I would even be good at leaving those donuts alone until everybody was gone and it was only me. And then, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> looking around, <laughs> no one's nope. Nobody no can, it doesn't count. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and part of that mindset and self-awareness, uh, one of the things to break through too, that's, that usually gets people really excited and, and helps them feel young and alive again. Yes. Tell me what helps me feel young and alive <laughs> is um, really looking at your stereotypes. When you're looking at breaking barriers, really challenge your stereotypes about who does what kind of exercise because so much of the time we think and and I'll say it we think yoga is for the skinny girls and aqua aerobics is you know for fat and injured and out of shape and and that's so so wrong and if you can break through your stereotypes of what kind of exercises you do as a person and try something new, it's it's amazing, like just how creative you can get. And um, like I had one uh one woman who came to me and she was so excited. She <laughs> and I had no idea how how this came about exactly, but she said, I was listening to your thing about, you know, breaking through stereotypes and because I've never exercised in my life. And she was in her almost 50, and she had never exercised in part because she didn't see herself as somebody who exercised. And she said, what I found, I finally found it and I love it. She said, I got a treadmill. I put it in my dark basement downstairs with no windows. And every morning I read a book on the treadmill. And and I just had to laugh because I told her that would be torture for me. I would hate it. And (laughs) she loved it though. She said, she said, I can do this. So what? So what if everybody else hates a treadmill in the dark? Um, by yourself, she loved it, and that's what got her to break, make a breakthrough. Yeah, and and I think that's what's really cool is that um, you, you've got to find your place because yes, I could tell you, yeah, you you know, you should be doing all this lifting, and you should be doing some cardio, and you should be, and we can go all through the shoulds. Mm-hmm. And there's a valid reason for each one. You should be working on balance. You should be working on mobility. All those different things that you know we do need to make sure we're maintaining. But how you get there can be your own unique joy. It can be your own unique path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that and that's really where the smile factor comes in in a big way. You know, I've got folks who backcountry ski, folks who sword fight. So you know, just <laughs> no for reals. That's a yeah, real I know, thing. I know fencing, fencing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> this, old, this old lady beating the crap out of somebody with a sword. <laughs> I. <laughs> she just turned fifty. She's so excited. She's. I, you won't believe what I'm doing. <laughs> but it is. I mean, because really, we we all know, right? Body doesn't know or care if you're on a treadmill or walking, it's still to your body, it's movement. So yeah. it's just, if you're moving and it's exercise, it counts. It doesn't matter if you're in a gym or not. Very much. Yeah. Very much. Now, every once in a while, something is going to come along. Um, yes. A car accident, uh, you know, you're, you're out going for a, a walk or run and you, you slip on some ice and you, you twist your ankle or, or, or mess up your knee uh, or break an arm. And, and now, dealing with this setback. And a lot of times, okay, I can't use my leg because I twisted my ankle. So Mm -hmm. they stop exercising. They figure since they're not exercising, they'll just eat what they want to eat, kind of Mm -hmm. go back to their old ways. And Mm -hmm. they end up with this setback. So what what was kind of an unplanned detour now becomes a, a, let's turn around and drive back home uh, kind of thing. How do we deal with that? Yeah, yeah. And that's, the the setbacks is a really... Interesting, tricky one, because one of the things I love that you said, Alan, is is when you have a setback, not if you have a setback. And I think that's an important piece is realizing that setbacks are normal. They happen. They happen to all of us. They happen to me. 
And um, one of this, some of the setbacks that actually really trip us up the most is a lot of times we get in our mind that uh, we're going to finally be a person who exercises. And now all of a sudden, I've got my plan and it's all perfectly laid out. Ta-da! And, but that's not the way it is. Life changes. And those are the tricky ones is when, like you said, you're moving to a new home. So new routines, new everything. Oh, it, it is yeah. the gym, the gym on this island we're moving to, um, uh-huh. that we moved to is, it's not really a gym. I mean, they have some dumbbells, <laughs> <laughs> they have a leg press. I would call it more of a fitness studio. Uh, sure. They do, they do classes and I'm thinking, okay. okay, if I go there, I'm probably just going to have to do the classes. Mm-hmm. until I get my equipment there, which is going to take me a little while because uh, yep. you have to put it on a container ship. It has to go on a boat and it's yep. going to be a while before I see that stuff. So wow. routine is completely thrown out. I have to come up with other things. I, I yep. actually, I, I, I even asked, I said, do they have tennis courts on, there's no tennis courts on this island. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> unless I want to build my own. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, build one and then charge people to use it. I'm like, hmm, that might, be a, that might, be, might be a bad idea, but um <laughs> So oh my a, lot goodness. Of the, a lot of the things that I, you know, I was thinking my lifestyle was going to entail when I moved down here, mm-hmm. it's not here. It's not there, you know? So yeah. I have to change and I have to adapt. And so, you know, a lot more body weight stuff. Um, I'm doing a lot more walking, you know, those types yep. of things are the things that I'm, I'm putting into my regimen to say, okay, I'll probably lose a little bit of muscle mass because I'm not lifting like I was lifting. You know, I'll probably mm-hmm. lose a little bit of strength because, mm-hmm. but I can do what I'm going to do. Until yeah. I get my equipment down here, you know, that, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. And that, that's exactly it. And I, and I would say for any of those setbacks, whether it's a broken leg or moving to an island with no tennis court or quote unquote real gym, um, <laughs> one of the pieces to start out with is first and foremost, is that compassion piece again. Have start first from a place of compassion for yourself and realizing this is normal. Setbacks do happen. And when you get there, which it could take you 10 seconds or two weeks, you know, it depends. Then you can start talking and talk to, if you live with someone, talk to them about your goals and and your desires. If you make a new friend, talk to them about your goals. And and you'd be amazed at how people can help you find resources to to make it happen. And, And really at our core, most of us want to be exercising. Most of us want to have a buddy to work out with. So so that's where that's where I usually have folks start and then again back to that the breaking through that stereotype of what kind of an exerciser am I? What do I do? Do so I can get massively creative to start really focusing on what exercise is going to meet my goals and make me smile. And those three things really are what is that sustainable piece that helps you stay in a good mindset for it all. Because again, you know, couch to active, I'm all about like living a life you love more than just creating out workouts you hate. So, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, then I define wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What Mm -hmm. are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? Ooh, well, I would say for me in my life, because getting and staying well has been complicated, and I'm sure I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> education, education, education is huge for me because I'm an avid reader, constantly reading. And I tell you, if you, for anything, I, if I Google, is keto good for you? Is keto bad for you? You know, you'll hear. <laughs> You know, you know, are oranges good for you? Are oranges bad for you? I mean, you will learn. It's just it's the amount of data out there is just ridiculous. So, the more education you can have on everything, the better. The second one for me, a huge piece of physical wellness is also mental wellness, and I think our generation has just been raised with a lot of. A lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure to perform, and a lot of that negative self talk. And so I think a huge wellness piece of that is to not be afraid to crack that door open. And really, if something inside of you is saying, I need to look at mental health, look at it. And then the more simple one is uh, 
get the junk out of you, get the junk out of your kitchen. That's what I had to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get, if it's there, the, I want to find I want to find the happy button and the unlimited willpower button. If you find those, let me know, Alan, because yeah. junk's got to stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty much the same way. My wife will she bought some life cereal the other day and she's like, Don't judge me. I'm like, I'm not judging you. <laughs> Food shame, <laughs> but, food but, shame. But at the same at the same time, I knew I would end up in that box at some point. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and just just I knew myself. I'm like, crap. Um yep. and, I, and I almost said, I'll just eat it all so it won't be here anymore. But uh, <laughs> I, I didn't that far. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, that's didn't funny. Go, I didn't go that far, but uh <laughs> I, I did actually eat some of the cereal. So Lynn, I want to thank you for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. If someone wanted to learn more about you and learn more about the book, Couch to Active, where would you like for me to send them? I have just have them Google Couch to Active, T-O, Active, and uh, head over to the website, www.couchtoactive.com, and everything's there. Excellent. Well, you can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 374, and I'll be sure to have links there. So Lynn, again, thank you so much for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Oh, thank you. It's been a ball. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Lynn. Uh, really fun character, very goofy, but uh, has a lot of fun with life. And that's a big, big part of the wellness formula. You have to be happy with what you're doing. And I love how she brings that to the table. And it bears in her podcast. It bears in her book. Um, do check those out. Spring has sprung. You know, uh, as this episode goes live, uh, we are into just the spring season starting up. And you know what that means. That means we're going to be wearing a little less clothing, uh, revealing a little bit more of our bodies. And this is a perfect time to really start working on your health and your fitness. So if you're looking for a coach and you're interested in getting things done in the most efficient and effective way without injury, I'm available to be your online coach. You can go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash programs. And from there, you'll be able to see the various programs that I offer. I have group one-on-one, and I do have some do-it-yourself. Uh, if you so, are so inclined to push yourself, I do have programs that have been proven effective for losing fat and for gaining muscle. Uh, so if you're interested in training with me, go to 40 plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash programs. Again, that's 40 plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash programs. Next time on the 40 plus fitness podcast, I'll do a solo episode where I discuss my recent move to Panama and what it's done for my health and my fitness. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.